Okay, so this is my client, Sarah. This is her. She's at the end of Nourish and Free now. She finished her 16 weeks and um, I wanted to bring her on and let her kind of talk about her experience and um, just share how it went for her and kind of like the amazing transformation that she's had. So um, Sarah, why don't you share just kind of like before enrolling where you were at in life, what you were coming from diet wise, um, relationship with food wise, basically just the place you were in before starting. Sure. So, um, when I, uh, started, uh, nourished free, I think this is actually somewhat important context. I'm actually in the midst of planning my wedding. And as I'm sure some of you know the lead up to a wedding. There's a lot of things that go on and it can be very stressful. But one of the big things is, you know, wanting to look the best for your wedding day, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And so that was putting a lot of pressure on me to meet the ideal I had set in my head. So I uh, was convinced I needed to lose a fair amount of weight. And I needed to do all of this stuff to get there. Um, Before joining Nourish and Free, I had been on, I think in the the couple months beforehand, I had gone through like two or three different programs uh, in an attempt to lose the weight. Um, All of them involved, you know, you know, macros or calorie tracking. Um, They often all involved, uh, you know, pretty involved extensive workout plans. There was one where I was uh, doing some very vigorous activity for an hour a day, four or five days a week. Um, And what I was finding is that I wasn't really making any progress. And more importantly, I was, you know, I could, I couldn't keep it up and I was miserable. And I was sort of like, I would follow it really well for a little while. And then it would fall apart, excuse me. And then I would, um, try to get like, I would fall off the wagon as it were. And then I would feel really bad about myself. And there was a sort of a downward spiral that then led into another program and on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah. I think that a lot of people can resonate with that feeling of like frustration and just feeling like I'm exhausted. This is getting me nowhere. Would you say you're working out an hour for five to six days a week? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And just like totally being worn down and beaten down. And um, yeah. So what kind of like, what was the turning point for you that you felt like you needed something different? Or I guess like, what was it about Nourished and Free that made you want to sign up? <laughs> Uh, so, um, I think, uh, there was, there was a moment in, in one of the, uh, programs I had signed up for shortly before joining Nourish and Free. Um, I, I, I was, I had signed up for this program and because they always promise like, oh, we have, you know, something that's sustainable and uh, that works and, you know, it's customized and all that good stuff. And you go into it and, and then, of course, you then realize it's exactly the same thing, basically, that's in all the other ones. And, you know, uh, this particular program was incredibly, uh, incredibly pushy on supplements to like up mm-hmm. your metabolism and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I had a moment where I was, because I'm not a big believer in those because they're not, there's really usually not much science to actually back them. Um, <laughs> and so I, I was like, you know, I don't know that I, uh, I really want these. And I'm just, I'm sitting there going, how did I get to this point where I'm in this pro- program that's the same as some of these other programs and I'm still not getting where I want to be. And I had this sort of, um, I I just sort of got mired in this whole, um, this whole situation where I was like, I'm constantly dieting. I hate the way I look. I hate 
you know, my weight, I hate my appearance. And it was at that point that I sort of realized that I might not be coming at this in the right way and that I'm, I'm hand, I'm, I have these indicators of having these disordered eating patterns. Mm -hmm. And once I realized that I was, you know, you know, going into program after program and just getting in this cycle over and over again, I realized that this was not okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the reason uh, Nourished and Free sounded good to me was that it was a program that was focused on getting a healthy relationship with food because, you know, I've done a lot of calorie tracking and I've done a lot of stuff like that. And I never have any real success. And it's also really stressful and it just makes you feel worse about yourself in the end. And so I could tell that I was, I had a lot of anxiety about food. I was thinking about it all the time. And I wanted to get to a place where I could focus on all the other things I'm supposed to be doing that don't relate to food. Um, and this was one of the only programs that made me feel like I was actually going to get to that point. And, and it, it also helps that you have the dietitian credentials, which a lot of other programs don't have. And you're just sort of going with whatever they tell you is true, even though that's not, they don't necessarily have the credentials to back that up. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of scary. What, all the things out there that are run by people that <laughs> have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned like with the other programs, you felt like they weren't sustainable, right? Like they ended up being the same thing over and over again, mm -hmm. but the way they marketed themselves was this is the sustainable solution. I feel like I hear, I see the word lifestyle a lot, with yes, like diet yes. gimmicks, which just makes me mad because it's like, now I feel like I can't use that word because <laughs> it's ruined. But what do you think it was about like those other programs that you tried that like ultimately wasn't sustainable? Uh, so, um, and you know, I'm thinking of one of the last ones I tried in particular because they, they actually did that where they're like, oh, this is, you know, about healthy lifestyle change. And I was like, oh, okay, try it. And it's, it's counting macros. <laughs> mm. And um, it was one thing that I, I read in their materials after joining was that like, they recommend, you know, eating a lot of foods that are pretty much only one <clears throat> macronutrient so that you can easily like adjust your macros along the way and you can just sort of figure it out from there. And I'm like, I don't understand how this is considered sustainable for anyone mm -hmm. like I don't I, like I don't I don't get it and I tried it um for a while and like I even tried uh at one point just because they said you know if you're having trouble with macros step, take a step back just do the calories and we'll go from there and so I started with the calories but it, it's it's just the same thing as you're just yeah that's literally. not eating foods yeah <laughs> and then you're tired and angry and you really want candy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and then they make you feel bad probably if you do have candy right yeah, it, it's one of those things where it's like well you have to you can only have things if you've planned your macros accordingly yeah. and I don't feel like spending that much time figuring out every single bite of food I'm going to eat in a day yeah but that's what you have to do to do those programs. And I'm like, this is not making me less obsessed with food. This is increasing the amount of attention I have to give it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know it's funny too, because those, those kind of programs will say like, oh, it's not like anything else, you know, like you're not going to have to track calories, but you are going to track macros. And it's like, they're all the same thing. Like it's all numbers, you know, and they mean different things, but they also kind of are indicating the same thing though. You know, it's just like, just the, a new spin on an old broken system. Absolutely. Yep. So what do you think was different about my approach and then approach in Nourished and Free? Uh, what I thought was 
really great about Nourish You Free is when you first start in the program, the first thing that comes up is talking about, you know, yes, there's the whole idea of like, how, like, what are you eating? Just so for a reference, but it's about how that makes you feel mm-hmm. and talking about making sure, you know, you're getting, you know, a balanced nutrition, but saying, you know, just, you know, eat in a balanced way, instead of counting every single amount and measuring every single thing. So you don't even really get into nutrition nitty gritty until much later. And so it's really about your relationship with food and your relationship with your body and your, your mindset around those things before you even get anywhere close to the sort of more nitty gritty details of you know, nutrition and things like that. And so, you know, this focus, taking basically the focus off of food as a tool to lose weight and focusing on it as a tool to fuel your body to do the things you want to do. Um, and it, it made, it made a huge difference. Um, I'm, I have been on like before nourishing free, I had been on and off dieting uh, I think I figured this out since I was 18. So it was like 12 years. Um, and what I realized is that um, like at this point I had no like real hunger and fullness cues at all because I had been doing it for so long. And so doing it this way, I actually am able to eat in a way that makes my body feel good. I feel satisfied. I don't, you know, overeat so much that I feel sick, I'm eating enough, um, which is something that, you know, it's really hard to follow cues you don't get. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that made a huge difference to getting a more healthy and more balanced eating approach without even really focusing on weight loss at all. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely, you know, I'll have people every now and then come into my little ecosystem that will have tried intuitive eating even like you didn't, you wouldn't say you had before, right? No, no. Yeah. But like, how would that have gone if you did try to do that on your own? Because if you didn't have like cues to follow, then probably would have been hard, right? Right. And like, that was one of those things is I had thought of it, um, because in one of the last programs, they were like, well, you know, if you really want to have sort of a, you know, a cheat meal, you can, um, you know, eat intuitively and go from there. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means for me. And like, I would have days in the past where I wasn't sick or anything, you know, because, you know, obviously when you're sick, sometimes you're just not hungry, but Mm -hmm. I would be, you know, not ill. And I would, I could go, you know, well into the afternoon without eating because I didn't, feel the hunger cue and I would get sort of the like the low blood sugar biological warning like oh I feel really dizzy when I stand up kind of thing before I would ever actually feel like any beginnings of hunger um and so if I had tried to do it intuitively you know there's I would still have that in my head where you know there are foods that I shouldn't be eating or I shouldn't have those and you know, I would still be without the hunger cues. I just wouldn't be eating. (laughs) And then, and then that's not particularly helpful. And then when you try to eat intuitively without the hunger and fullness cues, it's really hard to know how, like when to stop eating and when, like, Mm -hmm. like what's, what you actually need. Mm -hmm. So doing it alone after a long relationship with dieting is just impossible. Right. Yeah. And I like, you know, I see that a lot, like people start to get into it and, but they don't have supervision and they don't have the support on like learning how to get those cues back. So then they're just like, they have no idea what they're doing, you know? And so then it's tricky to try and like, you know, you can go buy the book, you can go do whatever. to so learn how to eat intuitively, but if you don't have the hunger and fullness cues, you don't have someone to teach you how to get them back, then you're going to be really, really stuck. Right. And right. 
probably more frustrated. So yeah, that was cool. Though, like, I think it was just a few weeks in, you were like, I have my hunger and fullness cues again. <laughs> right, right. It, it was, it was like after a few weeks, I, I noticed that, you know, of the following, you know, the sort of the rule of eating regularly and eating in a more balanced way, I started realizing that I was actually getting hungry again. And yeah. um, that was, that was a novel <laughs> experience. Um, and they've gotten like, it, it they've improved over time to a point where now I, I have what I think are essentially normal hunger and fullness cues um, mm -hmm. that I can follow and figure out, you know, okay, I'm hungry, I should eat now, or um, I'm, you know, I'm getting full, I should stop eating, and, and what feels comfortable and what feels good to do. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> so awesome. So, so cool. I love that. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're good. No worries. No worries. So what would you say like before and after working with me, like what would you say your biggest kind of like win has been or just looking back, like how's that experience been for you? Um, so I was actually thinking about this earlier. Um, I think one of the more interesting outcomes is I think I'm actually eating like healthier foods than I did before, mm -hmm. which sounds counterintuitive, right? Uh, on the face of it, because if you're like, well, dieting is supposed to be eating healthier, but like I would, first of all, I wasn't eating anywhere near enough. So I wasn't getting enough nutrients mm -hmm. that way. But the other thing is like, you know, if you're on a diet and you have to decide, oh, I'll have, you know, I, I can have this apple or I can have this like snack that I really want because they're about the same calories. You're not going to have the apple. You're going to have the other thing. <laughs> like I'm yeah. actually eating because I don't have to quote unquote spend calories on them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm eating more fruits and vegetables than I was before. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say overall, we, the sort of biggest win is that you know I used to beforehand when I was trying to lose weight I was essentially attempting to plan every single bite of food and I I would and if at all I tried to deviate from that or go away from that it would be super uh, anxiety inducing super stressful and I would be really really hard on myself for any deviation now you know if you know if my fiance surprises me with a donut, it's not a big deal. Like I can just have it. I, I can, um, I don't feel like, you know, I used to have this feeling where I was like, if there was, you know, chocolate or, you know, dessert of some kind in the house or it was offered to me, I had to eat it because in my head I'm thinking, well, I'm kind of restricting, you know, I, I can, I can cheat right now, but I can't cheat ever again. And mm -hmm. so I it was like, I really can't have it. And so I had to have it whenever it was available. But now I'm able to say, you know what? I actually am just not hungry right now. I'll have some later or like I'll have it tomorrow or something. And yeah. the freedom to say no to things when you don't want them, like I don't binge eat anymore. Um, and I have a lot more control over um how I feel and how I feel myself and what I eat instead of the other way around where I'm in these programs and they're setting out these rules about what you can and cannot have and what's good and what's bad. Yeah. But I don't have to worry about that anymore. There are some foods that I don't eat as often because sometimes I don't feel so good after I eat them, but it's not that I can't have them. I just have to, I just don't want to feel yucky <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's a big misconception that I hear a lot about learning how to be an intuitive eater and like just this whole concept of like eat whatever you want. It gets like a little oversimplified and then people start to think like, oh, well, then they just eat junk all day long and or they think that I'm teaching you guys to eat junk all day long or whatever. And it's like, no, actually, that kind of is like a roundabout way of getting us to have a healthier diet. <laughs> right. <laughs> because 
or yeah, we're learning about how to approach healthy eating very much differently. Right. And, oh, absolutely. and it's more enjoyable and, you know, you don't feel like you said, like you're not having to spend the calories on the one that actually tastes good, like a candy bar versus an apple or whatever. Um, you can just learn how to make choices that taste good and feel good. And, and it all goes together. It all works together in perfect harmony. (laughs) No, it's, it's been, um, and like, that's the thing is there's been a lot of, um, there's the whole mindset piece of it, which is huge, but there's also been physical changes. Like I, you know, I have more energy. I, my, my digestive system is behaving better. Like Mm -hmm. I feel better now physically than I did when I was dieting. Yeah. Which is what they say you will feel like. Right. <laughs> you will feel better. Right. And then and, you don't. And I never do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. That's so awesome. So for somebody that's like in your same position where they're um, coming off of, you know, being in different kinds of programs, macro counting, calorie counting, just dieting in general, feeling like no matter what they do, they just keep getting stuck with the same um obsession with food that just gets worse and worse. What would you say to somebody that's considering enrolled enrolling in nourished and free? Um, what I would say is that, um, we've sort of been sort of ingrained into this idea that, you know, you know, being super thin is the best way to be. And then, um, and dieting is the only way to get there. But I think one of the things from early in the program that really kind of convinced me was if dieting was effective, they wouldn't be making so much money off of it because you would only need it once. Right. Um, and I, like, it's just, I, I, and you know, it's, it's, something that was really, you know, ingrained to me is that, you know, you don't want to gain weight, you want to, you know, be thin, but there's actually a lot of genetic components to what your weight is. So I would just say, you have probably tried some variation of every diet that exists at this point. Most of us have, Um, and they don't get you anywhere. So I would say, try this, because it's going to actually, you're going to actually enjoy life more and be healthier than you would be if you were dieting and doing the same old tracking or, you know, food rules or like gluten, no gluten or whatever, obviously celiacs excluded. Um, Right. Yep. (laughs) Celiacs, we we get it. You're good. You're good. You can, you cannot eat gluten. That's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. It's, that's always the bottom line is what can we do to increase the quality of life and make you feel good. Right. And yeah, I love that you brought that. Up. I think I actually just saw a statistic yesterday that was like the um, diet industry and weight loss industry, you know, obviously they're up to like close to $200 billion industry, I think. And they have like an 80% um, customer like return rate which just is bizarre. Like, why are they returning if that's working? It's because it's not, (laughs) you know, and the system just convinces you that it's your fault and you just have to try harder and keep subscribing to that system and culture, you know, it's so backwards. And then you just feel worse and worse and worse about yourself and it just feeds you back into it. Whereas Mm -hmm. now I feel like I can you know, eat in a way that makes me feel good and still, you know, have the fun stuff when I want it, uh, you know, because now I have a more, you know, balanced approach to these things. So I don't have like super big, like, you know, overeating days or binge days or whatever you want to call it, where I just kind of, you know, go into a spiral Um, but I can still have, you know, ice cream and a lot of these diets will say, oh, you can have anything as long as you, but then it's like the asterisk, as long as you account for it. Mm. I'm like, but that's not the same thing. (laughs) 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your story. It's been so awesome to sit here and celebrate with you and hear how your experience has been. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to share. It's been, um, it's been more amazing than I thought it would, it could be. And I, I, a bit amazed that I've come this far in such a short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I'm glad that you're taking some time to celebrate yourself because I don't think you always give yourself enough credit. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that is probably give yourself true. all the credit, celebrate. And yeah, you've been absolutely amazing. It's been such a joy to watch you transform. Thank you very much. You bet. All right, Sarah. Well, I will talk to you in the future. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye.